At some point, you might find yourself on assignment. It could be editorial, commercial, advertising, or even for an NGO. Or better yet, perhaps you find yourself on a self-assignment. Down the block or down the continent, no matter. The key ingredient being the assignment. Most of the time, assignments come with at least a small amount of planning. There's the initial call or email, the details of the assignment, the goal, the timeline, the budgets, the access, the travel. Expectations are set, ideas are exchanged, plans are made, schedules are predicted to be met. And then, often due to unforeseen circumstances, things go sideways. Flights are canceled or delayed, access is denied, people don't show up, the hotel floods, the planet floods, an assistant falls off a rock ledge into a cactus, someone gets drunk at the wrong time, kit is stolen, someone is detained, locals try to overturn your van, or someone accidentally eats a piece of uncooked chicken. Shit happens. But when shit happens, what isn't happening is your assignment. Yes, your beloved assignment, the thing that gave you bragging rights as you puffed out your chest at the local photog gathering, while casually saying, quote, yep, headed off on assignment again, unquote, while the contents of your lower intestine turn to soup out of fear and pressure. There are good assignments and there are bad assignments. Most often, they both leave a mark. But when things go wrong, you can't just sit there posing in the lobby with your Leica and scarf and all black outfit. Your tattoos are no longer a novelty. And you're an American, so most of the people around you loathe your very existence. I need to pause to explain this is a hypothetical as an American on assignment. You Finns, Danes, or Ecuadorians will have to wait for my next film. The truth of the matter is you must perform. If the assignment goes askew, then welcome yourself. Warm yourself and introduce yourself to the idea of the Parallel Project. The Parallel Project is your best friend, your lover, and the Parallel Project never ever complains. The Parallel Project doesn't care if the hotel doesn't have running water. The Parallel Project doesn't care about the hot restaurant or whether you're an influencer. In fact, the Parallel Project hopes that all influencers are detained, detoxed, and deprogrammed. What is a Parallel Project and how do you get one? Well, it's pretty simple. Put down the 40 in the Jamaican thundercloud and have a quick think. What could you shoot that requires no access, no permission, no model releases, no location releases, no architectural releases, and is something you can find from sunup to sundown? And what makes an interesting story? When the prime gig goes down, the parallel project steps in to allow you to continue working. Some might call this a personal project, but almost all parallel projects are inherently personal, so I would just call it a parallel project and then credit me for labeling it. Let me give you an example. In the late 1990s, I left my home in California for the distant shores of Sicily. All I knew about Sicily was that it was filled with Sicilians, and it would take approximately 96 hours of flying time to reach. LA to Dallas, to New York City, to Frankfurt, to Zurich, to Lagos, to Guam, to Rome, and finally, on to Milan, where I could take my final delayed flight into Palermo. I once fell asleep in the Zurich airport with my bags tied to my legs. I was so tired my wife managed to steal all of my bags without my waking up. Swiss security demanded to x-ray my film and then promptly told me that all problems in the world were the fault of Americans. I explained that my mother was Swiss. I was then detained for my bad attitude. After reaching Sicily, I began to deploy Plan A. Photograph Sicilian Easter processions, the religious pilgrimages that are unique to the world. Sure, Mexico, Spain, the Philippines also have their form of procession, but Sicily had a unique flair. Before I left, I would research where and when I would attack. Five minutes after landing, however, I realized that none of my plans were accurate. Luckily, a local friend and photographer had the goods, and the project began, hot and heavy. Day and night, processions ran around the clock. We slept in the car. We slept in farmhouses. We didn't sleep. Coffee, alcohol, squid ink pasta. Oddly enough, before the trip, Leica decided to loan me a camera. But instead of a plain Jane workhorse like the M6, they decided to loan me a limited edition model covered in leather and snakeskin. I quickly realized I was afraid of the camera. I knew how valuable it was and didn't feel comfortable taking this out in public. 
So I left it in a friend's apartment while spending the next days shooting my face off on the primary story. Returning to Palermo with two days left on my trip, I noticed the on-loan camera sitting like an uncool friend at the edges of a dance party, alone and miserable. I have got to use this camera, I thought. My flawed ideology forced me to think that Leica would never loan me anything ever again if I didn't use this camera. By the way, they never loan me anything ever again. I need another project, I thought. Something parallel but non-committal. Something free. Not easy, per se, just accessible. So I grabbed the Las Vegas stripper-style Leica and I ventured out. And this is precisely what I saw. This. This poor flea-bitten mutt with a cone on its head. Hmm, that's interesting, I thought. Palermo sure does have a lot of street dogs. That became the plan. Street dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll shoot street dogs. My parallel project was alive. And then something else happened. As I rounded a corner high on Sicilian espresso, I was confronted with a wall of graffiti. Boom, wham, tranquil yet poignant. I thought about the fact that someone had risk imprisonment by spraying the wall, but the street dogs didn't care because dogs can't read. And that, my friends, is where this parallel story really begins. Street dogs and graffiti packed into a silly little project titled Dogs Can't Read. For the next two days, I attacked Palermo, day and night. Dogs and graph, graph and dogs. I somehow wore a hole in the prized Leica, but I no longer cared. I was possessed. I began to edit and design the work in my head as I wandered the streets in my baggy pants and man bun. Upon arrival back in the U.S., I began to design a small book of the work just for myself. But as I began showing the work, the response completely and utterly caught me off guard. Quote, oh, I see what you are doing, someone said. You've done a political piece. No, no, I haven't, I responded. Sure, you have, they answered, before explaining the political bend to my parallel project. I swear to God, I said, there is nothing political about any of this. It's just a bullshit project that killed two days and perhaps kept me in good standing with Leica. There was nothing I could do. The audience had spoken, and now I found myself playing catch-up. I took the small book to see a friend who was the CEO and founder of several startups. Oh, I see what you've done. A political piece, she said. What? Are you even listening to the story, I ask? Why don't you do the same project in Paris, she asked. Hmm, well, I don't know. Maybe because I never thought about doing this project ever again, I said. Okay, great. I'll commission you to go to Paris, she said. Palermo, Paris, New York, Tijuana, Lima, Panama City, and more. All these years later, Dogs Can't Read is still alive. My photographic shadow as I veer uncontrolled through life. There's no use steering now. I'm a passenger on a plane with no pilot. You see, the parallel project is your occasional foundation when what should be holding you up or in place has faltered or fallen. Find one. Find your parallel project and keep it tucked away. Break glass in case of emergency. Deploy in times of trauma or grief. There will be blood and there will be progress, like sprawling, poorly made track homes 80 miles from the city center with no public transit. You know, progress, people. You know you want it. Parallel projects can keep photography fun when the reality of the job has made it anything but. Don't take it too seriously. Go with what feels right. And for shit's sake, don't post it or try to sell it along the way. That would make you a turd, and God knows we have enough of those already. <laughs>